Can you guess what resolution my Skyrim is running at? If you thought 1080p or 720p, you'd be wrong. If you thought 480p, you'd also be wrong. It's in fact running at 360p. Don't believe me? Well, take a look. Ladies and gentlemen, Skyrim is going to be getting unofficial DLSS support. But before I explain how all of this black magic works and is possible, let's take a moment for today's sponsor. Are you tired of playing this 10-year-old game? Would you rather play a 20-year-old game instead? Well, Old School RuneScape has you covered. Old School RuneScape is the good old RuneScape you used to know. My audience is a little on the older side, so a good portion of you guys probably have fond and nostalgic memories of RuneScape like me. With constant updates, with improvements, and new content voted on by the player base, Old School RuneScape is guaranteed to fill that empty part of your soul with sweet, sweet nostalgia. There's currently a Fresh Start Worlds event happening right now. It's the old school runescape you know and love, but with a completely fresh economy, high scores, and adventure. It also has an exclusive achievement system to help guide new players. If you remember starting out on old school runescape all those years ago, Fresh Start Worlds offers you the unique opportunity to start again from scratch, with thousands of other players at your side. After 6 months, your progress in Fresh Start Worlds will transfer over to the main game. This includes your items, quest points, skill levels, and your soul. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link in the description to sign up for Fresh Start Worlds and start playing old school RuneScape today. First things first, what even is DLSS? Well, DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's an AI upscaling tool NVIDIA has developed exclusively for RTX graphic cards. But hold on, if you don't happen to own an RTX card, don't worry because this mod has FSR2 and XESS support, which will work on most cards. Regular super sampling is when you have your game run at higher internal resolutions than your monitor. Now obviously, this is quite expensive. You will lose a few frames for doing this, but there are a few reasons why you would want to do this. Gamers have been using super sampling for anti-aliasing, making sharp edges appear smoother, resulting in better image quality. Super sampling is also used very often by Skyrim screen archers to take 4K screenshots even though their monitor resolution might be lower at 1080p. But what if we don't have the hardware to natively run our games comfortably at higher resolutions? What if we wanted to do the opposite? So instead of increasing our internal resolution for a high cost, we decrease it for better performance and upscale it back to our normal resolution so it still looks good. Well, DLSS is our answer. It takes a target resolution to display on our screen using a lower resolution. So let's say you're able to run Skyrim quite smoothly at 1080p but your system struggles to run Skyrim at 4K. Well, you can use DLSS to upscale your resolution on the fly, with less of a performance hit than natively running Skyrim at 4K. And when configured properly, we can actually achieve better image quality at the same target resolution compared to not using DLSS at all. And on top of that, we get some amazing anti-aliasing. It's almost like black magic. There are a few different modes for DLSS, ranging between ultra performance to quality. These modes all scale input resolutions differently. Quality mode looks better than native resolution and has a skill factor of 1.5. But ultra performance has a skill factor of 3, rendering the game at 1 9th of the native resolution. It's creating 9 pixels from a single pixel. But of course, there are some downsides to DLSS. Depending on your DLSS quality level, you might notice some visual artifacting. Especially with moving objects. Distant objects might appear checkerboarded and flicker because there isn't enough visual information for DLSS to produce a good image. This is most noticeable when your internal resolution is low. But at higher internal resolutions, we start approaching acceptable image quality. It's not perfect, but the amount of frames we can save is ridiculous. And the moment we start to render the game at high internal resolutions, visual artifacts become practically unnoticeable. At this point, the majority of gamers won't even be able to tell if a game is being upscaled. And even if they do, most will prefer the benefits of the FPS gained, with some minor artifacting. Now some of you might be questioning how this is even possible. Well, Pure Dark has made a library which provides an easy way of adding upscaling to any game, even those running on DX11. 
But we're actually extremely lucky because Bethesda has left dynamic resolution code in Skyrim, which allows us to optimally implement DLSS and other upscaling methods like FSR2 and XESS. This might even work for Fallout 4 as well, if modders can find similar code in it. But this is also great news for other moddable games. If you can mod a game, there's a fair chance you can use Pure Dark's library to implement DLSS for it. They're actually working right now to get it into Resident Evil games, so this has some massive potential, not just for Skyrim. But okay, Pure Dark has managed to link their library with SKSE, with the help of Ursh and Doodles, and by disabling vanilla TAA and using code from Doodles' dynamic resolution scaling plugin, they were able to get DLSS up and running for Skyrim. This mod does need one requirement to work, that being shader tools, but installation is as easy as downloading and installing both of them with your mod manager. There will be an INI to configure resolutions, and an in-game UI with options to change your upscaling technique and their quality levels all on the fly. The mod also works for both SE and AE. It currently won't work for VR, though this is being worked on. But what does this all mean for us? Well, it means Skyrim players should be able to get more FPS without sacrificing too much visual quality, and hopefully by extension, it'll allow players to install even more graphically intensive mods. You might be running with a light grass mod, but because you're using DLSS, you've saved enough frames to comfortably opt for a heavier grass mod. But it's a little difficult to predict performance gains for Skyrim. You see, Skyrim is a single core game, and it's mostly CPU bounded. When I ran DLSS with 1080p as my target resolution, I didn't really see any performance increase. This is likely because my system was being bottlenecked from the draw calling limit of Skyrim. More on draw calls later. However, the moment I ran my Skyrim at a target resolution of 4K, DLSS gave me some massive performance increases. We're talking upwards of 50 FPS in some cases, and quality mode looked straight up better than native and gave me that gorgeous anti-aliasing with huge FPS increases. DLSS will be very useful for weaker cards, because if the draw calls aren't your limit, your GPU likely is. But with DLSS helping to lower this load, you'll be able to crank out more frames, and you might even be able to play at higher resolutions. But let's talk about mitigating unavoidable performance issues like Skyrim's draw call limit. Recently, Nvidia has developed DLSS 3, However, instead of lowering the resolution and upscaling it back like traditional DLSS, DLSS 3 interpolates between frames, essentially doubling your FPS. So technically, it's not really DLSS, it's deep learning frame generation. But anyways, DLSS 3 does not have an SDK right now, so we won't see it in Skyrim anytime soon. It's also currently only available to the 4000 series because of hardware requirements, but it has huge implications for mitigating unavoidable performance issues such as the draw call limit in Skyrim. Let me explain what I mean about this. Computers can be bottlenecked from the rate at which they send data to the GPU to be drawn. Each object in Skyrim has its own mesh, material properties, position, and size, but there is a limit to the amount of draw calls per frame. For Skyrim, this is around 10k. It's pretty bad because it's a single core game. However, after this point, we hit a bottleneck. But with DLSS 3, it won't matter if we have a bottleneck there, because we'll still get double the frames from the frame generation, which is wild. However, this is all hypothetical of course, as DLSS 3 is not guaranteed to be added to this mod later down the road. But there is one huge problem. ENB compatibility. A huge portion of players nowadays use ENB to graphically enhance their Skyrim. But without compatibility, DLSS simply won't work with ENB. So is this the end? Will the majority of players be unable to enjoy DLSS for Skyrim? Well, maybe not. Pure Dark has recently contacted Boris, the developer for ENB, and it seems that Boris has considered working on DLSS compatibility down the road. Though, it won't be his top priority right now, so this will likely take some time. If it even ever happens at all, that is. But if this mod does get support for ENB, this would be huge. Again, it's a little difficult to predict the exact performance gain, but ENB is the most graphically intensive mod, and by taking load off the GPU, players running ENB will likely notice a significant increase of frame rates. But if you're not worried about better performance and would rather improve your visuals, then you might be interested in DLAA. DLAA is a form of anti-aliasing, which you will be able to enable using this mod to get much better anti-aliasing. Skyrim has TAA anti-aliasing, which you might notice struggles with handling small meshes like tree leaves. 
DLAA, on the other hand, will be substantially better at handling these small meshes, so it might be worth enabling if you have the extra performance to spare. Overall, I'm very curious about the future. I'm sure a lot of players out there, myself included, are willing to sacrifice a little visual quality with some artifacts for huge bonuses to FPS, especially if that means we're able to run with heavier graphic mods. And remember, this tool isn't just for Skyrim. It could be used to add DLSS to other moddable titles like Fallout 4. And that concludes the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Grab some merch and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. My amazing patrons help make it possible for me to keep producing the content you're watching while I also study at uni. Take care lads and lasses, and I'll see you next time. Are you tired of playing this 10-year-old game?